Hi everyone and welcome to part one of two on how to create beautiful magazine layouts using Adobe InDesign. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. I also do unboxings on Saturdays. Today we're going to walk through exactly what makes a beautiful magazine layout and we're going to go through a ton of examples so that you have an idea of how to create your own magazine cover. Now in part one, we are going to go over the major principles of covers versus articles, as well as the four elements that make up a magazine cover. Then I'm going to give you some homework at the end so that you can pull together all of your own materials so that when we jump to part two, you can follow along when we go into the Adobe InDesign tutorial and you have all of your elements to create a magazine cover using your own branding. All right, so first I said we were going to talk about the difference between covers versus articles. And the main difference is the way that text interacts with images. So on covers, as you can see here in this example, we have text covering up the image. So typically when you go to, um, same thing happens over here. When you go to an article, instead what will happen is the text will shape itself around the image uh, like so. So this makes for a more interesting layout for magazines. They all kind of look unique and it also helps entertain you and sort of uh, make the article a little more interesting to read than say just a big block of text uh, versus one that's kind of broken up like this in a more interesting pattern. So that's the first thing. The second thing is let's talk about the hierarchy of the different elements on a page. So first you have the text for the articles is always front and center. So you'll notice this is always on top of the image. The second thing is your cover photo. So this picture, I think that's Kylie Jenner, Kendall Jenner, I'm not sure, but she is then on top of everything else. So she gets to come second. The third thing that comes into place is your uh, magazine title and the month or the edition, right? Special special issue, um, or you could, I've seen some people label them as uh, first quarter or edition number 579, if they are counting, it's usually comic books. Um, and then the very last image is the background. So let's go through each of those different elements and what you should think about. So the first is the text, and you basically just need two, possibly three different fonts, and that is always going to be different than your magazine title, 100%, should never be the same. Um, and these are going to be varying sizes based on just making the text interesting all by itself, because remember, we're not really playing with the text with the image, we're just trying to emphasize different parts, that's why this ampersand is huge, uh, the rest of these are kind of small, so we'll eyeball it, and we'll talk about that more in part two on different rules for uh, sizing the text. Same thing with the color, so this is says 20th anniversary in yellow, but the rest is white, because remember this is a special edition, so these colors kind of match to help that stand out. The next thing you want to think about after you've chosen your fonts uh, is you want to think about your cover photo. So usually a single image does best. Absolutely positively do not uh, use a stock image of a styled desktop that is not going to work well for a magazine cover. Um, you have one subject sort of sets the theme for your entire a magazine or what your magazine is about or something else. Uh, so try to pick one image. And when you try to pick an image, I, you know, I usually say pick a transparent image because if you don't know what background you're going to be using, uh, this gives you more options. So we'll talk about backgrounds last. So the next is the title and month and the issue number. So over here we can see that this magazine has 
a month and a year. So you need to decide if you're going to have a month and a year or if you're going to produce this quarterly. Uh, so typically if you, obviously if you have a month, somebody is expecting a December and then a January and a February and a March issue. Uh, if you say, you know, uh, the quarterly issue, they're not going to expect another magazine until the next quarter. Uh, so, you know, something to think about when you are creating magazines, um, but typically most people expect a monthly magazine. However, you don't have to do a monthly magazine. You know, some people do bi-monthly magazines. I know Oxygen, I think they still do a bi-monthly magazine. Uh, and that's just normal. Everyone kind of thinks about that, they expect that. And when you have a bi-monthly magazine, it typically comes out about two weeks to one week before that month begins. So if you have an April, May magazine, it's going to come out right about now, which is, I'm in about the third week of March. I'm not sure when you're watching this video. Uh, the next thing that you're going to think about is your background. So you'll notice most of these, now these are fashion magazines, but they have a plain background. Would you think there'd be something fancy or a lot going on, but you already have so much going on with the text and this one image and you've overlaid stuff on top of that image that most magazines do not put a a very complicated background. It's just too much. It looks busy. It's unattractive. Uh, it kind of repels people. So your cover, just like a book cover, should attract people. So you'll notice a lot of people just use a plain white. and There's nothing wrong with using a plain white. And sometimes they'll put a little shadow or a little gradient in. But again, plain white is always okay. That's probably the only time weight is acceptable. I mean, this is a nice pattern that we have going on here with the light purple and the dark purple. Um, but again, in style seems to vary it, right? So this kind of went better with her coloring. So sometimes your image on the front too can help determine what's in the back. Now, the exception to this would be uh, we have Traveler Magazine, so obviously it's travel, so we're trying to show where our cover model is traveling to. So the other thing to think about too is we can change these, uh, the titles and the colors based on your background too. So they should always contrast, and we'll talk about this more when we get into the layout, but if you have a light, um, I should say if you have a gray background, you want to make sure, a light background, you have a dark title and vice versa. So. That is pretty much it. So let's just recap, because that's going to be your homework. First, we learn about the difference between covers versus uh, magazine articles and the way text and images interact. Next, we talked about the hierarchy of order and we confirm that the title of the articles comes first, then your image, then the title of the magazine, and last, your background. And your background, like we talked about, could be white. So start thinking about all four of those elements and what fonts you want to use, and then we will start incorporating that in part two. So I will see you back here next week for magazine cover articles, or magazine covers part two.